Hello there, my name is Ismos and welcome to another Blender tutorial and today we're going to be looking, looking at uh, how to create a swarm of cockroaches uh, as you can see them here. Uh, they are trying to find this cube here and uh, you can see some of them will even uh, navigate uh, through a maze and uh, try to find it and see some of them are just taking this path. Uh, they're also, they can also, they won't go through obstacles I, as you can see them here. And I uh, can see because of this wall here, they can't just go through this wall. So this is a nice effect to, uh, if you want to create something like a thriller. Uh, I think this effect was also used in uh, Stranger Things. Uh, instead of roaches, uh, they used rats, I think. Uh, of course, they didn't use blend. I don't know what they used, but uh, it was something. It is something you can achieve uh, with uh, this kind of technique. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's get into it. And uh, maybe let me show you a few settings here before we go into the tutorial. And see if I don't want them to follow uh, anything, I can just go to the system here and uh, remove this goal setting. I'll just change the rule here to back to fully, and uh, they should start ignoring uh, the cube. Just remove this. Uh, remove this. You can see. And maybe increase. Uh, the what is it? The speed, maximum acceleration, land acceleration. You just put it at two. Oh, I think it's maximum is set to one. Yeah, you can see they just going on uh, with their business, and uh, some of them will make out of the maze uh, if you give them uh, enough time to do that. So you can see some of them, they're just trying to navigate through the maze like that. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. The first thing you want to do is uh, create a roach, a cockroach, and uh, this is what I did here. Uh, if you want to see how I did the texturing, uh, I used projection uh, mapping uh, to uh, projection UV mapping to kind of quickly texture uh, the cockroach. But uh, uh, if you have watched uh, Ian Herbert's tutorial, you can uh, you will see this. I'm using the same techniques here, uh, but uh, the difference is that. Uh, when you use that kind of projection mapping, you usually get uh, all the sides use all the sides will use the same texture. But uh, what I did here, uh, I had the setup. Uh, so basically, this is what you would have if you used one single image, uh, like uh, what Ian Hubbard usually does in his tutorials. I uh, would have uh, one side with a texture like this, but at the bottom will also have the same texture, and uh, the side will have the same texture. Uh, I show this in my in my second channel. Uh, blender money so I'm just uploading the video there so you can watch the entire process of texturing the the cockroach and also setting up the entire system here to work in a time lapse but uh, basically if you use a single image uh, this is what you end up with at uh, the top uh, sides and everything will have the same image you can see uh, the top face has the same texture as uh, this bottom face but what I did here uh, because I wanted to add a bit of detail so that the top face is different from the bottom and uh, the sides here I used three images uh, one for the for the top uh, another one for the bottom and then a third one for the sides and what I did I used uh, image paint texture painting to create a mask to mask between the top and the bottom you can see now at the bottom faces the, the bottom texture is uh, different uh, from the top texture uh, that I also mixed with uh, this side image so that the sides are also using a different uh, image otherwise if you just use one image you would end up with that one uh, texture for all uh, the sides uh, which was, which is okay for something like this but uh, if you want to have more realistic realism and uh, maybe if you're trying to go for close-up shots you may want to use multiple images like this so I show, I show how I set up this the time lapse maybe i'll do a step-by-step -step tutorial on my second channel blender money uh for how i set up the entire texturing part of this uh so yeah let's get started and look at this one here so i'm just going to copy this oh also the, the other thing i did is i didn't want to have this entire node because it kind of sometimes if you have a lot of nodes in your shader uh they tend to slow down your uh, your viewport so what i did i bet that uh, the entire set up here into one image that I could, I could use as an image texture and uh, if you go to the 
using anything, you can see what I ended up with here. Now, so I'll just copy this approach here, paste it in a new project, and uh, basically use that. Again, the project files are always available to any to my Patreons. Uh, so if you want to support me in that way, you can just become a Patreon and you'll have access to all my project files. So yeah, let's start with a uh, uh, surface. Again, let me just copy this here. Well, I don't want to go through uh, the texturing. Let me just paste that. So this is our flow and uh, we want a swarm of roaches. So the first thing you want to do is add an emitter. I'll just use a cube here and uh, go to the particle settings and add a new particle setting. Uh, if you play back, you'll see that, uh, again, make sure that uh, the flow here has a collision uh, physics property uh, so that the particles can bounce off that. I also added some stickiness so that they don't just, they stick on the ground uh, rather than just bouncing off like that so if you increase the thickness in the collision property settings uh, they will stay on the ground instead of just bouncing off like that I also in the cockroach I did give it some animation so shape key animation very basic just to give it that actually I don't even like uh, this bouncing up here so I'll go and I just shift it down a bit still there but uh, yeah it's okay so just add some keyframe animation to other uh, shape keys here I've already done a few tutorials on how to animate shape keys animate with uh, shape keys so you can check out my tutorials there uh, or just go watch uh, the time lapse of this here and uh, yeah uh, the entire process is shown there so yeah now let's substitute these particles uh, with uh, our roach here so I'll just select the cube I'll go to the particle settings and uh, under render, I can set render as to object and select uh, the roach as my object. You can see this is what we have. Uh, they're a bit too small, so I'll go into the render settings and increase the scale and I'll also increase the random scaling just a bit. Uh, they're also kind of disappearing or dying quicker than I want them to, so I'll just go under the emission settings and uh, increase their life time to about 1000 so that it it's a sleeve, it, uh, they stay around for the length of the timeline and uh, yeah this is what we, we we have right now and they're just going it going off in different directions uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, to have them behave like roaches what I will do is uh, select the emitter and again go to the particle settings and under physics I uh, want to change from physics from the physics type of Newton Newtonian uh, to uh, voids this will give you a more realistic uh, roach movement uh, but uh, the problem we are having is that uh, they are flying everywhere now you can see I think we need to clear catch it because you can see in the first few frames are uh, they're still using uh, the Newtonian uh, physics type and then at around here they change uh, that so uh, if, you, if you're having that issue just move the emitter just a bit and uh, that should reset your catcher yeah, but uh, roaches don't fly like this. Uh, so if you want to remove that behavior, I just have to go under the physics settings. And uh, under uh, the void brain, uh, let's go, I think it's under, let's see, movement. At turn of flight, so that they just fall down like that. But now they're just lying dead uh, because they don't have any movement to them, uh, except the gravitational movement. Uh, that is making them slide uh, like that. So you want to allow land uh, that way they can have some movement in them like so. And you can see now I think they are also a bit too large. So let me go under the physics tab again. Sorry the render tab and uh, reduce uh, this size just a bit. You can turn on ambient occlusion so that this looks a bit better. And uh, there are a few settings under the physics tab you can play with to get better results. So if we select the object and uh, under physics 
tab. And so the behaviors you see here are all are created by these rules here. So if I remove all the rules, they will just be dropping dead like that. So if you want them kind of separate, uh, then you would add, you just click this plus and add a separate rule. Uh, that would give them a separation distance from each other. So if I play back, they kind of start spreading around and giving room from, for, to each other. Another thing I want to do here is uh, add object rotation. I think that usually helps with uh, the movement because you see, if I don't have that one, are uh, they kind of sliding sideways as you can see they don't have a direction they're not facing the direction they're moving so if you turn on object rotation you start to see their movement is now better and their their head is facing the direction of uh, the movement which is nice okay this is what we have and uh, there are also more settings under the uh, the brain, uh, the main brain, you can add a void. I think this will just uh, have them avoid each other or avoid an object. So if I have, uh, let's say uh, this here, I'll just give it a slight animation going through uh, the swarm. So I'll just set a keyframe there. And uh, then add a keyframe like that. Uh, then I just have to select this as an object uh, they should be afraid of. And you can see they're all running away from uh, that object. Yes, I, need, I think I need to reset this by moving this a bit. And, uh, yeah, you can see they are all avoiding going this side because uh, the object is this side. So if I move this this side, oh, actually this is animated. So, but uh, I guess you get the point. So let me delete that because I don't want that uh, that uh, behavior. Uh, you, there are also more behaviors here. You have flock. Uh, this means that uh, they will uh, because of this separation distance. They will always keep a distance between themselves and uh, but uh, they will flow together. I don't know why there is always a jump here. Uh, so just, I think it's because maybe I don't have enough RAM or something, but uh, yeah, so let me just reset this. Yeah, maybe RAM, I don't know. But uh, yeah, this is what a flow would I think. And uh, another thing, interesting thing about this is that uh, you can add collision objects uh, that will have these, uh, that these objects will avoid or will not go through. So if I wanted to add a boundary or create a maze for these uh, objects, I would just add a plane. And uh, just so it's easy for me to create uh, the maze, I can add another modifier, a modifier here, a skin modifier. Let's make sure that this has no room for be under uh, that these cockroaches can uh, escape through. So let me just scale this a bit. Uh, if you wanted to create a maze for this, you can easily do that. I'll just have to give this a collision object, a collision property. And you can see uh, they don't go through this object and uh, obviously if you wanted you can uh, add okay i need to mark this as a root mark root mark root mark root like that so i can easily create a maze for this here so i can extrude this see how maybe let me just end this route here 
So you see that uh, they will start navigating outside of this until when they start finding the path and they, uh, they are very good at path finding. Yeah, so that's how you basically make roaches. And uh, there are also a few other settings, so I'd like to show you. So if you go under the movement settings, you also have wall climbing, you also have uh, this jump speed. If you want them to sometimes jump, you can give them a jump speed. Uh, let's play back. See, sometimes you start see, seeing some of them jump around I see some have already started escaping let me just increase the length of my timeline just a bit uh, to make this even more interesting I'm just going to uh, to emit all the particles at once maybe in just a period of five seconds instead of instead, in a period of five frames instead of a hundred so that they can all just drop and uh, if you go to the display settings under instancing you can turn off uh, display instance and uh, render settings and render this instance and you can if you want to select that again you just select it from the outliner so it's now visible it's no longer visible in uh... so I think a more interesting shape would uh, would be something like uh, let's see if us display this delete this in edit mode and uh, let me shift. Let me add a Suzanne monkey and see how this would look. Then disable this. So I guess you can start with the shape of a human if you have that, and uh, how them collapse like that alien scene in uh, in Men in Black, the first Men in Black. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think the movement is a bit too fast. So, I'll, you know, I think I've explained everything I need to explain here, but uh, you can always come in here and uh, reduce uh, the speed to whatever you want. Yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial.